So I'm excited to be taking a look at the recent release of Elementary OS. This is Elementary OS version 8. It just came out a few days ago. Elementary OS, if you're not familiar with it, is an Ubuntu-based desktop Linux distribution. They have their own custom desktop environment, which they call Pantheon. They have their own custom suite of applications. It's got a kind of a old school Mac OS look and feel to it as far as you got your panel at the top, you got your dock centered at the bottom. Overall, I find the UI design kind of you know rather simple by design but I also think it's a uh, very new user friendly like this is one of those Linux distributions that I can put on like a Windows users laptop and just hand it back to them you know say they've got a laptop that's been running Windows 7 or Windows 10 and it's you know riddled with viruses maybe it's gotten real slow over the years and they just want their old laptop to work again I could probably put something like elementary OS on it and just hand it to that Windows user, and they would ask no questions because I think they could figure out, hey, this is the start menu, right? This is the applications menu. You got your dock at the bottom. Like this is a very easy user interface to work with. Now, I've always been a big fan of Elementary OS. I will say the last major version that they released, uh, Elementary OS 7, I did have a couple of complaints with it. Uh, one of the big complaints I had with it was the App Center. They do have flat pack support supposedly in elementary os but it wasn't enabled out of the box uh, like you had to go and enable the flat packs yourself which again for a new user distribution like something that's supposed to be easy for the average user i thought that was unfortunate now supposedly when i open the app center i should be able to install flat packs out of the box so let me search for a piece of proprietary software that's probably not in the standard repos so let me search for discord i'll type discord here and there it is so we do have discord here and it is available from FlatHub, and I'm assuming if I were to click install, it would install just fine. Uh, we get a screenshot, we get a little bit of uh, information as far as licensing and the website, yada, yada, yada. Now, one interesting thing, uh, where is the install button to click to actually install this, you know, this app center? I don't use this particular software center very often. I've got this button here that says free. I'm assuming... I guess it's free of charge because I, I know their application center, the app center here, their software center, they do have the ability to have paid software in it. So I, I guess that's why the button, instead of just saying install, had the price, which was free in this case. Uh, Discord, I really didn't necessarily need to install it uh, here in this VM. This is a virtual machine I'm in, by the way. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install Discord just to see if flat packs do actually work. So I'm going to wait for the install and then I'm going to launch Discord just to make sure it works. And the install finished and let me click open. And yeah, you can see Discord did in fact install. It's installing some updates uh, because I'm limited on space here in this VM. I probably shouldn't have installed a big program like Discord, which is an, an Electron app. And yeah, now it is open. Let me go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead and close out the App Center. So that was probably my biggest complaint uh, in the previous version was the uh, App Center just didn't have those flat packs enabled because that was one of the things in their marketing material. Hey, we support uh, flat pack, but if it's not enabled out of the box, you know, again, I just thought that was a, a bad um, a choice as far as from a new user perspective. Now, I was getting a notification here, so I do have this bill here, so I'm assuming there are some things going on. Web is running in the background, so that was uh, the browser was opening because I opened Discord and Discord opened a browser window, so that's interesting. I've also uh, got some background activity Activity. Discord is running in the background. Do I want to allow that? Yeah, I'll go ahead and allow that. Restart is required. I took a system update when I first installed this. I guess I need to restart because there was probably a kernel update. I will wait to reboot the machine until after this video. One other change that they have made is now that tapping the super key does open the menu here, which is kind of the default behavior in pretty much every major desktop environment on Linux. Just tapping the super key should open or close that particular application window before in the previous version when you did the super key it brought up like a help menu of keyboard shortcuts which i thought was kind of neat but i can understand for many users they expect that super key to actually bring up the menu so to make it more in line with the other major desktop environments they've made that change 
Now, if you prefer the super key to actually bring you that uh, shortcut menu, that key binding menu, you can go into the settings here. So let's go into the little settings center and go into keyboard. And one of the first things you see is layout and you have the super key behavior by default. When you tap it, of course, it brings up that menu, the applications menu, but you can change that to the shortcut overlay. And now when I tap super, I get our little cheat sheet of our keyboard shortcuts. So that is how you get that back. If you're used to the old behavior and you prefer it, you can easily change that back. Of course, you can go in here and also uh, adjust some of the other key bindings. For example, they use close the uh, window with focus as Alt F4, which is a standard like Windows key binding. That's a horrible, horrible, horrible key binding for something that you would probably use all the time like for me being a keyboard user I would close windows all the time using a keyboard shortcut and I hate that that is binded with a function key the F4 key that makes absolutely no sense from a uh, ease of use perspective so for me I'm gonna change that I'm gonna set a new shortcut and I'm gonna change that to Super Shift C, which is something I use in all my tiling window managers. So now that I have that, if I do Super Shift C on that window, it goes away, right? And that's much easier than Alt F4, which on a keyboard like I'm using, a, a smaller form factor keyboard, doesn't have function keys without switching layers. So it involves like four fingers for me to do like an Alt F4 kind of key binding, where Super Shift C is very easy to hit. Some visual changes they've done. Obviously, they've worked a little bit on the dot. They've also worked on the little uh, multi-task uh, view here. If I had a bunch of windows open, let's actually open some windows. So I'm going to open two of these uh, file manager windows. So I've got a couple of them. I'll go to an empty directory here. I'll also open the calendar application. I'll also open the music application. So I've got some different windows here. Now standard kind of key bindings you're probably used to to switch between the open windows alt tab works. So if I do alt tab, you know, I can quickly switch, you know, between different windows that are here on the screen. One neat little feature they added to the dock is that if you have an application that has multiple windows open, you can switch between the multiple windows by actually clicking on the icon on the dock. Remember, I opened two file manager windows. Well, let me go click on the file manager. And you can see it pulls those two windows out of that stack of four windows, the two file manager uh, windows, and I can choose between which one I actually want. So that's kind of a neat feature. Again, kind of new with elementary OS 8. They've also worked on their little settings menu here. So up here in kind of the sys tray area, the far right icon is a quick settings menu where you can turn on the screen reader or the on-screen keyboard. So they've got some accessibility options, which are nice. You can also adjust the font size, again, for accessibility for readability purposes. That's nice that they have that. You can also turn on and off dark mode. For me, I like dark mode. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on because especially against a lighter colored wallpaper like this scene that we have here for our wallpaper, I would much prefer a dark theme. So that is, in my opinion, a much nicer way to go. Now let me open a terminal. So I'm going to hit Control alt t to see if that binding opens a terminal. It doesn't. Uh, they must be using something different, maybe Super-T. Yeah, Super-T will open a terminal. So that works as well. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to do a uname. If I can type correctly, dash R. So they're on kernel version 6.8.0. I'm also going to do a HTOP. If HTOP is installed, it is. See how much uh, RAM and CPU we're using. We are using, it's kind of hard to tell because of the coloring here. You guys probably can't even read those numbers, but I'm using uh, just a few percentage uh, of my CPU. Now, uh, this is a virtual machine. You're not going to get great performance in a virtual machine. And they do have some fancy animations. There's also a little bit of uh, blurring going on in some things. So, you know, it does take a little more CPU uh, RAM. I'm using about 1.4 gigs of the six gigs of RAM I gave this VM. That may seem a little high as well, but again, you know, you got a lot of visual stuff going on here that you would probably get a little bit better performance on physical hardware rather than a virtual machine. So I won't hold that against elementary. Now they've been working toward Wayland support on elementary, but right now they're still defaulting to X11. So if I do an echo, if I can type correctly uh, xdg all caps underscore session underscore type 
you can see X11 is returned. So this is the Pantheon desktop environment running under X11. If it was a Wayland session, this command here would have returned Wayland instead of X11. Now with elementary OS 8, they are defaulting to Pipewire as the audio server. Now if I do a where is Pipewire, you can see Pipewire is installed. For those of you curious about how many packages are installed out of the box on elementary OS, it doesn't come with a ton of programs installed out of the box. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty slim uh, Linux distribution in my opinion, but if you want to see exactly how many packages are installed, do an apt list space dash I. And that's a list of everything installed via the apt package manager. Now I'm going to up arrow and pipe that into wc-l. wc is the word count program. Giving it the dash l flag means give me a line count rather than a word count. And you can see there's 1,644 lines of output in this command. That means there's 1,644 packages installed via the apt package manager. And let's see how many flat packs are installed out of the box because they did have flat pack enabled out of the box. Was anything installed via flat pack? Yes, there's actually several things installed as a flat pack. I kind of did not expect that. Uh, Discord, I installed myself, but they are installing the calculator, the camera program, their music program, their screen shot program and uh, they've got uh, the gnome uh, file roller program that's the zip unzip uh, the archive uh, program they've got the document viewer also installed the fonts so uh, they've got a lot of their major programs the things you would find in this application menu many of those are actually installed as a flat pack one other thing I want to check on this version of elementary because it's one of the things I always focus on, but you know, it does make a difference. I do want to see what kind of wallpapers it ships with out of the box. So I'm going to change wallpaper. So right click on the desktop, choose change wallpaper. And yeah, we got a lot of the wallpapers we've seen in the past. This is the uh, default one, but I've seen many of these in previous versions of elementary, such as, uh, this particular rock photo. I know I've seen this leaf photo in past versions. So a lot of really cool wallpapers from past versions of elementary OS. Many of these are just really gorgeous. Lots of nature photography, which, you know, I always love a good photograph for me because I'm using a dark theme right now. I kind of would like a lighter wallpaper. So maybe something like this really makes those dark, you know, almost black or really dark gray windows really pop against a light colored wallpaper. So that might be one I go with. So overall, Elementary OS 8, not a drastic change from Elementary OS 7, but they've certainly made some major improvements. A lot of the complaints I had about the previous version have gone away. They've made some really nice visual improvements as well. Overall, I think they did a fantastic job on this release. For those of you that are fans of Elementary OS, I think you guys are going to be improved with this as well. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode, Matt James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenren, Morgento, and Ubuntu, and Willy. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at the recent release of Elementary OS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like elementary OS, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.